All right. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Alex for uh, data assistance, which is a feature we're all really, really excited about. So go ahead, Alex. I'll start Thank you me. very much, Kyle. Uh, my name is Alex Shrestinsky, and I'm an engineer at Superconductive working on the Great Expectations open source platform. And today, it is my pleasure to give you a brief glimpse of the functionality we have been working on called the data assistant. And I will be doing a demo with this notebook. Um, just a little introduction before the demo, and that is the use case is when a data engineer is tasked with uh, quantifying the data set, covering it, bracketing it with a set of meaningful expectations, and does not know where to begin. One looks at the data, perhaps a very wide da uh, data table, multiple tables with columns that one may not understand uh, what the values should be because the domain may not be familiar to the engineer. And uh, any domain experts who could come be of help may not be available for days. So what can one do? Uh, the data assistants are the component that is an application on top of the profiling framework that we have been developing. So profiling framework looks at data, divides data into different subsets and comes up with a meaningful set of metrics and expectations generated automatically. The data assistant takes that foundation and shapes it into uh, channels of topics, uh, semantically meaningful collections that one can reason about, sort, sort of like instead of boiling the ocean, how can we uh, chunk it up into manageable pieces and reason about them individually where context may be all the same. For example, one can think of the data as growing in volume. So how do we reason about that? Well, one can look at the table number of rows and chart how that number is growing over a set of batches. Or one can look at the unique values in the different columns and see if the number of unique values is growing. So that would be a way to think about volume. And in today's demo, I'll show uh, the example of the number of rows in a table changing from batch to batch. Other data assistants may be focused on nullity. For example, in uh, certain domains, date of birth that's entered into a column may not need to be 100% filled. It could be uh, smaller but what is the correct number? So no nullity or uniqueness would be other assistants that we'll be working on. And we'll be able to also combine these assistants into a higher entity, sort of a dictionary assistant that combines maybe volume, nullity, uniqueness, and even parsing date times, make sure that those are two validation requirements. So for the present demo, we have the set of batches, each on average 5,000 rows, plus minus a couple of thousand rows from the taxi data set, New York yellow cap taxi data set, sampled one month per batch over three years. So we have 36 batches of data. And so the code up the top of the notebook is the boilerplate that I'm just going to go ahead and execute right now to prepare for the data assistant part of the demo. So here are our 36 batches with varying number of rows. We import our data assistant classes 
data assistant, which is the abstract class and the volume data assistant, and the result object that will be generated, filled to contain the data. Let's name our data assistant and instantiate it. The data assistant takes name, the batch request to obtain the batches of data utilized in the underlying profiler and the data context. Let's look, indeed it has the correct type. Now let's run it. <clears throat> Running the data assistant returns the result object, which will contain metrics and expectations, as well as the time it took to run the profiler, which can be used for troubleshooting purposes. And now let's run it. Uh, the run finished quickly and we have the result object. Let's go ahead and display the result object. That's what it contains. Profiler configuration, the net net profiler, the metric, set of metrics, and also the expectation suite. Now let's uh, plot it in a way that shows information instead of telling us what we should do with that information. That would come in a subsequent cell. As you can see, the plot shows from batch to batch the number of rows in this set of data samples is fluctuating. We cannot claim that the volume of data is increasing. So the interpretation would be that the number of taxi rides is kind of a nominal from month to month in this particular three-year interval. Now let's plot and see the actual brackets of what the expectation quarks should take. That's our upper and lower limits. When we do that, the plot shows us where the outliers will be uh, marked. And these little areas outside of the bracketed intervals are exactly the areas as proscribed by the false positive rate that you can set in order to run the estimations of the parameters that will uh, go compute the metrics for this assistant. We are working on APIs to give you control and access to be able to manage what your particular data assistant will output so that you can then take the resulting expectation suite and use it as your development, test, and production validation set. Thank you. Uh, would be delighted to take any questions. I think everyone, I think you just blew everyone's mind, Alex. They're well, the, I, we're all hoping that this, when it ships, will become really useful to you. And we would be really thrilled to work with you at honing the usability and practicality of this component. We're also very excited about. Do we, do we have a, a date when a version of this can get into people's hands? Our, our range, time range? We, the, this is being developed incrementally and shipped. Uh, it goes out every week. Um, I, I think in terms of, but we're still, we're still cranking on it. Like I would consider this sort of alpha beta, particularly from an API standpoint right now. Uh, the target is uh, in four weeks, mm -hmm. uh, definitely within Q2. Cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, we'll make sure to get it uh, in the community's hands as soon as possible and maybe even reach out for some some early feedback on, on uh, some of these items. Well, thank you very much. And uh, let us kick it back to Kyle now. I think uh, I think actually someone might have a question. Uh, Mahmoud, oh. do, you, do you have a question? Yes. Hello, um, I'm Mahmoud. I'm a data engineer. Uh, based in uh, Miami, I work for EMED Healthcare. 
And I've been using great expectations. Uh, I've, I've actually been implementing infrastructure uh, with great expectation to run some QA on our data sources and our uh, uh, data lake. So uh, I have a question regarding the uh, data assistant. Uh, so does it provide you a, like, uh, a set of expectations out of the box regarding it, the data? It does. It provides you the expectation suite. You can name it, or if you already have a suite, you can pass that reference. Or if you don't have one, it will create it for you, a temporary name. You can get the entire suite and examine the expectations as well as the metadata. You can extract the expectations from it and add them to your own suite. Um, or you can use it wholesale. Or in the upcoming work, we will enable APIs for you to control the parameters that affect the metrics that then contribute to the actual values of the parameters in the expectations comprising that suite. So it, it provides expectations based on its understanding of the data, right? That's right. It, uh, we take a system on a subject matter, let's say volume, specific topic, slice of the all of the things we could be thinking about our data set, and it will create expectations for that theme. Then you can pick another theme. So we, today we talked about volume, but you can also talk about nullity or uniqueness. So you pick those themes, you'll get expectations for that. And we'll also provide a way to combine them into one suite so that when you're happy with all themes and you just want one suite to use in the testing production, you'll be able to uh, take advantage of that as well. So it sounds great. Uh, that that was great work uh, right there. Um, I, I just have a, a like a, a a simple idea or a contribution that maybe benefit this. So, um, it, like so, since it's called the data assistant, do you think it could be more interactive and like at some point have uh, like an interactive uh, uh, like like take user input into account maybe and. Uh, try to scan through all the columns and uh, maybe tables from the certain data sources and uh, like maybe uh, provide you a sort of survey that asks you which types of columns you care about, which types of data types you care about, and uh, then list that down and then begin generating that suite. That is actually already in place in at least some form, I'm sure it can be made better. But the idea of, uh, you know, instead of boiling the ocean, dividing our data set into manageable concepts, we have uh, this notion of a domain, which is exactly what it means, domain of influence. So you could say my domain is the whole table. My domain is a column, my domain is two columns or a set of columns. When you specify these domains, this is exactly where you get to name not only columns, but even columns by meaning. For example, numeric column, date column, mm -hmm. um, commercial, yep. you know, accounting column, money, for example. So the basics of that are in place and uh, we would be just thrilled if uh, users begin experimenting and trying it out and give us feedback as to what could be made better or what they like or not so that we can together evolve this platform to a uh, usable system. Yes, that, that would be great. Uh, great work, thank you very much. Thank you, great question.